I'm going to go ahead and share with you all my birth plan because I'm sure you're kind of wondering like how this is all going to work out with Devin being over the road and gone from the house. Like how is this whole situation going to work out? Well, I'm going to tell you all. Hey Mountain Family, how's it going? So today I am 35 weeks pregnant and before I start this video, I'm going to go ahead and do like a disclaimer slash apology. <laughs> As you guys know, if you've been subscribed to my channel for a while, you know that I do not put up a facade, I do not put up a front, I give you exactly who and what I am. I mean, I'm coming at you with no makeup on, my hair up in a ponytail, and my husband's shirt on, so <laughs> I keep it pretty real. I have two toddlers to take care of, I'm pretty much nine months pregnant, and my husband works out of town. And I am in survival mode. That is pretty much how I'm going to describe it. I am exhausted on a level that is just... Hard to describe unless you've been there. And some days I have the energy to vlog and some days I just don't. So if I miss a day on my schedule of vlogging, please don't think that I'm flaky or that I don't like my YouTube channel or any of that weird crap. <laughs> That's not true at all. It's got nothing to do with anything other than the fact that I am tired. I am so tired. And I'm just trying to get through these last few little weeks because she's going to be here like within the next month until she's here and I can feel more normal again. So as far as symptoms go, she has definitely for sure dropped. I don't know like her station or anything like negative two, negative three. I have no idea. I just know that she's dropped. That's all I know. All I know when, is that when I stand up, it feels like she's laying right on my cervix. And when I sit down, you know when your baby is so low that when you sit down, it's like they're in your lap. Yeah, that's basically <laughs> that's basically what the feeling is like. Like right now, when I, where I'm sitting, she's like practically in my lap. Like the, she's that low. Another symptom that I have is hot flashes and cold chills. Like I'm going constantly from super hot and getting hot flashes to is super cold so I'm going hot cold hot cold and I'm t constantly changing my thermostat from heat to cold from heat to cold this is a benefit to my husband working over the road because he's not here to complain about it so I can like do that and it's okay Hormones are the devil. As far as sleeping goes, I have two new problems because, you know, I just didn't have enough of those. I had to get some more. One of them is now my hands and my arms will go numb. I'm a side sleeper and I like for my hand to be kind of propped underneath my pillow or by my face. I don't know why I'm like that. I just am. But if I do that nowadays, my hand and my arm will go numb. Kind of like when you have carpal tunnel. I had this when I was pregnant with Carly and I was told that it's pregnancy induced carpal tunnel. It does make trying to sleep extra annoying. And on top of that, my heart is starting to race now whenever I lay on my left or my right side. Not racing so bad like panic attack racing. It's just racing enough to where it's above normal and it's enough to keep you awake. So that's another major reason why I toss and turn at night. If I don't have a hand or an arm that's going to sleep, if I'm not getting up to pee every, you know, 15 minutes, if I'm not tossing and turning because my hips are aching because I've been on one side for too long, then I'm tossing and turning because my heart is racing and I'm afraid that she's laying on some kind of artery and I have to get her off of it. In other news, I had an ultrasound at 33 weeks in like three or four days. It was something like that. And baby Andy is nice and plump and chunky already. I'm going to show you guys a picture. I was going to hold up like an ultrasound picture, but you can't really see that that well. So I'm just going to go ahead and show you guys the picture now. You guys could probably see her face pretty well, but in case you were wondering like what else was going on, she's sitting like this. She has her left shoulder, or she did have her left shoulder, <laughs> in my left hip, and she's facing this way, and she had her right arm right there by her face, like that. And I don't know if you guys like saw that or anything, but did you see like that little roll right there? You know that roll that babies get right between their wrist and their forearm? Did you guys see that or am I just crazy? Because I swear I saw that little roll already and I was like, oh, she's going to be chunky. I haven't had a chunky baby. I've never had a baby above seven pounds. So I'm like really curious to see if Andy will be our first eight pound baby. I don't know. 
I mean, I could be totally wrong, but I was so happy to see her and I think she looks cute and chubby already. Oh, and I almost forgot to update you guys. I almost forgot. Uh, the placenta abruption that I had at 15 weeks, it was five centimeters on either side of my belly. I don't know if you guys remember this. They went ahead and they checked that during the ultrasound and it's almost completely healed. There's, I think, one centimeter on my left side, which is like this big, <laughs> and there's less than one centimeter on this side. So I can have a perfectly normal, healthy delivery. They are still considering me high risk because I have still lost 10% of my placenta, but I'm not really at like a high, high risk of having placenta problems during labor or anything like that. So most likely my birth and everything, that'll go just fine. And the last bit of news that I have for you guys, I'm going to go ahead and share with you all my birth plan because I'm sure you're kind of wondering like how this is all going to work out with Devin being over the road and gone from the house. Like how is this whole situation going to work out? Well, I'm going to tell you all. My first sign of labor, always, I mean, it hasn't failed me yet. My first sign is always bloody show. Every time I have my bloody show, it never fails. Within 24 hours, a baby will be here. So whenever I do get my bloody show, I'm immediately going to call Devin. I'm going to say, hey, I've had my show. You should probably start getting your way over here. He's going to contact his manager, tell him what's going on, and he will just be working his way back home. In my last month, his manager already told him that he's going to keep him within a 300 mile radius of our home so it won't be as bad of a drive so I'm just kind of like hoping and praying that he'll be close enough to get home and make it in time for the birth because I can just see it I can just see him like rushing to the hospital and getting to my room and I'm already at the pushing phase and I'm like where have you been <laughs> and I do plan on filming this birth as much as I can now Keep in mind, <laughs> I am the only one in my family who vlogs and is comfortable being in front of the camera. As you guys know, Devin is not very comfortable with being in front of a camera. He's so camera shy. And pretty much my entire family is the same way. I've already asked my sister-in-law if she will please film as much for me as she can. And she's agreed that she will. But again, she's not a vlogger. So I don't exactly know how this is all going to go. I'm just going to hope and pray that I at least get enough footage to put together a birth vlog. And it will be good memories for us first and foremost because these are our memories. But also I can show you guys like how the birth went. Speaking of the birth, I do plan on going all natural as much as I can can. The particular hospital that I go to is very natural birth friendly and I do mean very. So much so that when you ask for your epidural or if you get one, they do not give it to you in a drip. They give it to you in a push. So it's not like you're constantly hooked up to epidural medication. You're, you're not. <laughs> And if it wears off and you're at nine and a half centimeters like I was when I had McKinley, you just don't get any more and you just get to feel everything anyway. So I would just rather not have the epidural and I would just rather go natural if they're going to, you know, practically make me go natural anyway. I would at least like to have the option to stand up and move around and change position rather than laying there in a hospital bed because I got an epidural and now I'm a fall hazard. Now I'm going to show you guys my 35 week belly. So this is my 35 week belly with the shirt on, which is too small, and as you can see, it is what it is. There's her from the front. From this side, I know, my belly's big, it, it really is. I just don't carry them small. And with the shirt up. Can you all tell that she's dropped? Is that just me? Or can anyone else tell? I feel like she has. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you want to be on Baby Andy Watch, my social links are down below. You can click on those. And I will see you later in a new vlog. Bye, guys.